coming up on this edition of April Within On Air. Several days ago this month, uh, the Rapidan Dam in Minnesota um, exploded at, with uh, water and um, during a rainstorm and also a bridge collapsed. All that and much more when Able Then On Air starts right now on this weather episode. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Then On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of all people with all abilities despite disabilities. We would like to say um, thank you to our partners, um, the Division for the Blind Vermont, the Association for the Blind Vermont, and many, many, many others, including Washington County Mental Health. Um, Arlene is not here today. She's recuperating in rehab. I'm Lawrence Seiler. On this, on this weather episode, on this um, weather edition of Able Den On Air, we talk about the recent happenings in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, where a dam um, exploded a bridge and, uh, during a rainstorm, and um, a lot of things uh, happened there. So according to um, the Associated Press, um, we are, we are going to be talking about what happened to Minnesota's Rapidan Dam, R-A-P-I-D-A-N Dam. Here's what to know about flooding and partial flooding. In, uh, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the visuals were stunning. The water and river uh, and um, earth river surged around the southern Minnesota Dam carrying a shipping container with it and toppled utility poles, wrecked and uh, it also wrecked a it also wrecked a substation and washed away part of the riverbank. Uh, a home on the edge and eroded slope collapsed in the river. Earlier this week authorities said the Rapidan Dam, dam uh, near uh, Makeko faced an intimate, an intimate threat 
of collapse, but later said the, uh, the abruptment had partially failed. The river swelled and an onslaught of rain pummeled the Midwest for days. Last Wednesday, the dam was still intact and had no mass evacu uh, uh, um, uh, evacuations. Authorities said the partial failure of the, of the abutment was caused by a recent bout of heavy rain, but a past assessment of the dam revealed that it already was a risk. Here are some things to know. Early Monday morning, an emergency management, uh, emergency management workers noticed that the water was surging over the dam. As water flows, peak, it peaked debris and parts of the structure and the west abatement of the dam partially failed. Conditions around the dam spun current that was too vicious of workers to cross safely to clear the, to clear the detritus. The rush of water destroyed the power station and caused outages for about 600 households. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz said, Water levels peaked Monday about 34 um, at 34,800 cubic feet per second. The normal flow of 500, the normal flow is 500 cubic feet per second. Those figures made this flood um, the second largest in the dam's history and the equivalent of once of a century flooded. Uh, uh, flooding. The levels had begun had begun to lower by Tuesday. Uh, county officials said water continued to flow around, eroding, and the west side of the dam. Tuesday, officials said, but the overall water levels de um, decreased. That the prospect of a total collapse was unlikely. Construction of the Rapidan Dam was finished in 1910, but has been described by the county as a hollow concrete dam, dam um, founded on sandstone bedrock in a steep U-shaped valley. The dam is approximately four, 475 feet, 145 meters long, and 87 feet, 27 meters high. It was built to generate electricity, but flooding damaged it enough in that that in 1965, um, flood damaged it enough in 1965 that it didn't provide power for nearly 20 years, according to an engineering report. That report was prepared by Minnesota. I'm, I'm sorry, by 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 um, a Minneapolis firm in 2021. Said emergency repairs um, that said emergency repairs were required in 2002 because of extensive undermining and its foundation. Four more rounds of repairs followed through in 2018. Flood damage in 2019 and 2020 stopped the generation of power again. In 2019, the dam experienced what was once the highest floods on record, severe weather that the flood what the flood and other rainfall uh, since have caused significant damage to the dam's structure and usability. According to Blue Earth County, 
said that the dam was in a state of disrepair. Further damage occurred in April 2023, conducted by the National uh, Inventory of Dams, found that Rapidam was in poor condition. Officials said that whether the issues were identified in past poor assessments led to the partial failure. The structural integrity of the dam is a question for a, for a long time, Walls said. The removal of the dam has been a question that has been up there. Areas areas downstream of the dam had no had no permanent inhabited structures, reducing the risk of fatalities and property damages. County officials said, but <clears throat> but officials close the park downstream that a, attracts hikers and fishermen. The reservoir downstream of a dam provides um, power generation, store, storage, and recreation, but is full of sediment, making boat areas difficult. The county, um, the county said, because the reservoir was full of sediment, now as pushed downstream of the dam. Blue, <clears throat> Blue Earth County Public Works Director Ryan Thioge, um said that more, <clears throat> more than a century worth of sediment upstream of a dam, rather environmental damage, could occur that sediment would break loose and seep into the river, he said. In 2021, engineering, engineering reported um, a cost of repairing the dam is $15.2 million, in addition to the $6 million that the county has spent in, since 2002. But a county report said the following year raised about the idea that even the dam's ability to generate electricity were restored. The county would most likely lose money, an average of $107,000 annually of the following 40 years. And in, <clears throat> and in 2021, and in 2021, uh, after, hold on, uh, I'm sorry, um, and the 2021 engineering report said after 40 years, um, the county would still face the same issue, whether to remove the dam and uh, said that repairs would be three years of planning a year of construction. A separate twenty-one, a, a separate two thousand twenty-one study of the same firm uh, suggests that the dam would have benefits. It would, it would, it would be called the potential move. Um, it would be called the potential move, an outstanding opportunity to reestablish a tree flowing river. That would um, that would turn the former lake uh, into 360 acres of parkland. The actual removal of the dam would cost 10 million dollars, but the project would come with a lot of other costs, such as stabiliz stabilizing the riverbanks, preventing erosion, and replacing the county bridge road over the dam, increasing potential costs to $82 million.
What more the report said that uh, would require five year um, planning and another five years afterward. The report of the Minnesota legislature may be required to authorize bonds to pay for it. The, the work <clears throat> would require the county to install a temporary dam upstream and, uh, and divert the river around the Rapidan Dam, dam so crews could, <clears throat> crews could work on dry ground and bring in equipment. Sometimes it's, explo sometimes it's explosives, sometimes it's less traumatic. The back hole, <clears throat> the back hole coming and hacking it away, um, said Amy Salas Colbert, spokesperson of the vi for vice president of conservation group, um, she's the vice president of conservation group American Rivers, which which monitors safety issues. Um, okay, so now let's go to, um, I'm going to give you information on the American Red Cross in case of flood damage. So if you ever are in a situation, whether you're in Vermont or you're um, in Minnesota or somewhere that you have encountered flood damage, uh, the American Red <clears throat> the American Red Cross um, floods are um, floods are among the most frequent cause of natural disasters. Let's um, get it out of the screen. Okay. Um, so, um, if um, if you remember the Kentucky floods of two thousand twenty-two uh, in late in late July, uh, heavy rain twenty twenty-two. Heavy rains caused extreme flooding across Kentucky and the immense damage to homes uh, and critical infrastructure. Uh, the Midwest flood, floods of, two, of 2019, um, the, Orville, the Orville Dam of 2017, the Louisiana <coughs> floods of summer 2016, West Virginia floods, of 2016, Houston and Gulf Coast floods of 2016. So, um, let me, um, so here they give you the American Red Cross, which is www.americanredcross.org, uh, gives you um, flood safety situations. Flooding is a temporary overflow of water onto land uh, that is normally dry. Floods can result from rain, snow, coastal storms, storm surges, overflows of rivers, and dam, fa dam uh, failures. Flood can be dangerous. People die by drowning, and they don't evacuate before flood waters come when they enter flood waters. Flood can damage buildings, roads, uh, and cause power outages and create landslides. Flood waters carry waste. Um pollute drinking water as well. Flooding can develop slowly and quickly. Flash floods can be sudden 
and violent, uh, and violent. Um, climate change increases uh, risk of many types of flooding, but we can take the action to prepare. Prepare now to protect yourself and your loved ones. Um, so according to the American uh, Red Cross, there's videos here you can watch. Uh, again, this is www.redcross.org forward slash get help on how to prepare for emergencies. Okay, so um, understanding flood risk. Learn about the types of flooding that can impact your home and community. Types of flooding include flash floods, river floods, storm surges, coastal floods, burn scars, debris flows, ice debris, jams, snow melt, dry wash, dam breaks, and, and levee failures. Reach out to your local office of emergency management for advice. Please know your home and com community's flood risk. Visit the FEMA flood map, www.fema.org, um, the FEMA flood map center, and search your home using your address. Plan to stay safe. Uh, there are river floods, storm surges, coastal flooding. Know if you are an area, if you are an area um, pro, pro, sorry. Know if you are an area prone to river floods. Review your evac evacuation plan so you can leave quickly if officials advise you to evacuate. Storm surge. Please be prepared to evacuate immediately if local officials advise. A storm surge can cause water levels to rise quickly and um, and flood a large area in minutes. Coastal flooding. Please be prepared to evacuate immediately if local officials advise to move inland before flooding begins. So here there's a, um, in different languages, English, Spanish, and so on, um, the flood checklist. So let's go to that. Um, see if I can... Oh, sorry. I'm going... Flood safety checklist. Flood prepare. Um, flood preparement. I'm sorry. Flood preparedness checklist. So if there's okay, um, let's go down here and go to the checklist. Flooding is temporary and over overflow. Here's what to do in case of a flood. So let's um Okay. So if we need um learn the types of flooding that impact your home and community. Types of flooding include flash floods, river floods, um storm surge, coastal flooding, burn scars, and so on. Uh the FEMA flood map um, is there. Make plans to stay safe. Flash floods can be sudden and violent, and you may have little or no warning. Designate a place <clears throat> on high ground that you can do quickly. Plan to move on higher ground before flooding begins. Now, the biggest thing is, Turn around, don't drown. Never walk, swim, or drive through a flash flood. Just six inches, 15 centimeters of fast moving flood water can knock you over. And 12 inches, 30 centimeters can carry your vehicle away. Um, to prevent injuries, and we have a couple of minutes left here. 
um, to prevent injuries, understand the dangers you may face and keep your loved ones safe. If you are evacuated, wait for officials and to say it's safe before going home. Avoid f falling power lines, poles, and wires. They can electrocute you. Watch out for falling trees and other debris. Use flashlight or <clears throat> battery-powered lanterns rather than candles to review, to review fire risk. Uh, sorry, to reduce fire risk. Uh, many injuries happen during cleanup. Please wear protective equipment like um, like boots, long pants, work gloves, eyewear, and an N95 respirator mask to protect your lungs. Follow the <clears throat> follow. Oh, sorry. Uh, N95 respirator mask to protect your lungs. Follow the advice of local pub public officials and health officials. Learn how to use equipment safely. Do not touch, I repeat, do not um, touch electrical equipment if it's wet or if you are stand standing in water because you could get electrocuted. Cleaning up is a big job. Take care of yourself, work with a partner, and take frequent breaks. And kind of the last thing before we really end the show, um, protect your health. Flooding can be can, can flooding can contaminate drinking water. Check your local public health department uh, while drinking water safely. Do not get sick and eat spoiled food. I repeat, do not get sick from eating spoiled food. Throw away food that got wet or warm from, from the flood. When in doubt, throw it out. Stay away from flood waters and contain sewage, sharp items and chemicals that can make you ill. And last thing, if you are a diabetic, um, during flash floods, storms, snowstorms, things like that, please make sure you have enough diabetic medication and please keep your syringes in a red. Um, uh, hospitals and rehabs have them. Uh, they're a, uh, a large red container um, that uh, is basically, uh, that has a, um, a, a medical sign on it. So when in doubt, uh, please call 911 or your or your um, or in Vermont call 211 if you have any um, if you need any help during a flood. Uh, please keep your phone charged. Please keep extra batteries. Uh, it's not online, but it's just common sense. And um, keep keep a first aid kit. So, for more information on the Red Cross, you can go to www.redcross.org and please contact the Vermont uh, Department of Health for any other help. Uh, do not eat spoiled food. Uh, as they say, when in doubt, throw it out. Uh, this has been a... Um, public message and a show today on Able Did On Air focusing on uh, flood preparedness and the recent happenings uh, that happened out west. But uh, if you should experience a flood or your house gets flooded, um, it's only stuff. I understand people have insurance uh, when it comes to flooding, but protect your life and your loved ones. That is the most important thing, and it's only stuff. You can replace clothing. You can replace food. Uh, example, if you drop money in, in flood, or um, some people have a safe full of money, um, it, 
if it doesn't get that damaged, you can turn it into a bank and they'll give you new bills. Um, don't worry, just take care of yourself during a flood. For more information on the American Red Cross, you can go to www.redcross.org forward slash damn Red Cross get help. Um, and for more information on Able Den on Air and any of our other shows, Able to Cook and Great Iron Sports Talk, but Able Den on Air is the only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of many people with abilities despite disabilities. Stay safe. See you next time on the next edition of Able Den on Air, www.abledon on Air. Um, sorry, www.orcamedia.net. See you next time.